Helping the city and county of San Francisco to comply with the American Disability Act is one of the priorities of many engineers, city inspectors, and city staff of the San Francisco Public Works. In the American Disability Act, there are a wide range of laws that prohibit discrimination for the disabled. In this video, we are going to show you what the city of San Francisco is doing in planning, designing, and constructing programs which are essential for people with disabilities for them to be able to cross safely the city streets. There are many challenges faced by the designers and contractors of programs in the city of San Francisco. The city is well known for the difference in topography and terrain. There are more than 50 hills within the city limits, many of which are densely populated. Neighborhoods with steep streets and narrow sidewalks, neighborhoods with flooded terrains, intersections with irregular street configurations, heavy pedestrian traffic in downtown areas, train stations or hospitals, and we have many visitors touring the city throughout the year. In order to accommodate all these scenarios, San Francisco Public Works have developed through the years different types of courtroom designs. We have programs that are standard and are built in flooded areas with plenty of space on sidewalks and where the grades of the streets are easy to work with. But in most cases, due to the difficulty in the terrain, alternative programs have been engineered like these merged programs, programs with a narrower width either in the slope or on top landings, the width can be reduced to 3 foot instead of the standard 4 foot, programs in mid blocks with narrow sidewalks, programs with different shapes and configurations to accommodate again the space on the existing sidewalks, or to accommodate the existing obstruction like a fire alarm or a street light pole that it would be too expensive to move. We have other programs that are blended transitions, programs inside ball bouts, programs next to a planter or landscape areas, programs within a median, a bus median, a muni median, programs in an island, and raised crosswalks. There is a large variety of choices in designing curb ramps in San Francisco. Now the difficult task to the planners in the San Francisco Public Works is the decision making on which curb ramps and what locations this curb ramp will be built within a fiscal year. This is not an easy task. Unfortunately, resources are always never enough to do all the scopes or plans that the city would like to accommodate. For standard curb ramps, the cost is about $2,000 for design and $5,000 for construction. For non-standard curb ramp design and construction, the cost is determined case by case. The city always listens to the community groups um, to understand their point of view and to see how to prioritize those areas and make the best determinations to where the greatest footage or uh, needs uh, for the disabled occur. One of the main tools that the city uses in order to determine um, where to allocate the resources for the curb ramps is a database called CRIS, Curb Ramp Information System. Some staff every year uh, inspects the curb ramp throughout all the corners of the city. Um, in this way, uh, our city staff can know how many curb ramps are being built, which ones are new, which ones are old, which ones are compliant or not compliant, 
with respect to our local standards from the accessible street crossing standards. We want to figure out which, how many cameras do not exist, but they should exist. Next, we are going to explain an overview of the design criteria process for new curb ramps design. There are federal, state and local standards for curb ramps design, but local standards always equal or exceed the federal standards. In the city and county of San Francisco, engineers have developed through the years our own local standards called accessible street crossing standards. So let's see what are these general ADA curb ramps design requirements. For the ramp section, the design slope has to be between 5.5 to 7.5%, the cross slopes between 1 to 1.5%, the width of the ramp is 4 foot, and the maximum depth can be 15 foot, usually in steeper sidewalks. The design flared sides slopes are between 6 to 9%, and they are measured perpendicular to the ramp. The level landing at the gutter has to be designed for a slope of 1 to 1.5%, perpendicular and parallel to the path of travel, for at least a 4 foot by 4 foot area. And the same is for the level landing at the upper end of the ramp. In a 4 by 4 foot area, we need to design a slope between 1 to 1.5 percent perpendicular and parallel to the path of travel. Existing vertical obstructions shall have a minimum clearance of 6 inches from the edge of the ramp to the nearest protruding part of obstruction, like in this case we have a traffic signal pole 6 inches from the ramp, or we have a fire alarm box 6 inches from the ramp. Pedestrian push bottom poles will be allowable in the pedestrian push bottom allowable area, which is a 4 by 4 foot area with design slope not more than 1.5%. Fire and police call boxes can be located between two curb ramps that are separated for at least 3 foot width. This is for wheelchairs to be able to access the call box and the distance from the edge of the top landing to the box cannot be more than 30 inches. Existing utility boxes and covers shall be adjusted to be flush with curb ramp surface and shall not straddle any change in plane. Existing utility boxes and covers within the detectable warnings shall be relocated outside the detectable warning area. The transition from the foot of the ramp to the gutter cannot be more than 11%, meaning that the sum of the slope of the ramp and the slope of the level landing at the gutter cannot be more than 11%. The surface of the curb ramp and detectable warning shall be stable, firm, and slip resistant. The concrete curb ramp surface shall be broom finished transverse to the axis of the ramp and shall be slightly rougher than the finish of the adjacent sidewalk surface. Typically, curb heights within crosswalk areas are 6 inches, but they can also be between 4 to 7 inches. Positive drainage is required to drain surface water on sidewalks away from property lines and buildings to the street. Base repair is required when the designed outside concrete gutter elevation is lowered more than 1 inch or raised more than 2 inches. All these curb ramps design standards shown are great when designing a curb ramp in a flat area of the city like in the Sunset District, but in most cases designers cannot meet all these standards at once due to steep hills, narrow sidewalks, or various existing obstructions too expensive to move or relocate. 
San Francisco Public Works engineers have developed a curbland design guideline list which helps them to prioritize which of the curbland design standards are the most important. For example, in this corner of the downtown area, the designer was able to maintain the 7.5% design slope of the ramp by reducing the width of the ramp from 4 foot to 3 foot. According to the curb ramp design guidelines, the ramp slope is of more importance than the ramp width, and therefore, by reducing the ramp width from 4 to 3 foot as a variance to the curb ramp design standards and with the permission of the San Francisco Public Works ADA coordinator, we were able to design a new curb ramp in a location where curb ramps didn't exist. We're going to talk about the preparation before you go into the field. Number one thing you should always have in gathering it up, PPEs, hard hat, glasses, type 2 vest with the stripes running up and down the shoulders, and your safety boots is a must. Okay, second thing, get familiarize yourself with the, with the plans and specs, most specifically the drawings. Drawings come usually multiple pages, so it's up to you to find out where some of these things are. In the front, there's usually a table of contents. And if you look on the, on the left side, it'll tell you what the drawing number is. In this example, in this example, we're looking at ADA ramps at an intersection. And on this drawing, there are references to additional drawings that give you the details for the ADA ramps. In this case, I'm at, I'm at construction civil drawing 11.1, 11.2, and it tells me to go to civil drawing 11.6 and 11.8 to get the details for the ADA ramps. Now, th this work in involves a little detective work, so it's not something simple. You just go in and in three seconds find the drawings. You need to, you need to look through them and figure out which ones apply and which ones are correct. Your ADA drawing. You can see it gives you the slopes on the ramps and slopes of the wings. Also gives you the direction of flow for the gutter, right there. Tells you how the warning band was originally designed. Also shows you the pattern for the sidewalk, which is needed later. In San Francisco, we do curb ramp, we do a curb and gutter first, curb ramp, then sidewalk, and PCC. Not necessarily in that order, but definitely curb and gutter is first. As I mentioned earlier, the curb and gutter has got to have a keyway. The tactile domes. The new tactile domes that are, that are being requested by the federal government are made out of concrete. So they need to be handled with care. The old ones, which were plastic, were easily broken. They wore out faster. And under the weight of vehicles that ran on them, as ran over them, would crack. The new ones that are concrete are supposed to be stiffer and stronger and last longer. And to help install them, they, have, they come with bolts holes in the bottom to help you elevate and adjust them for elevation. <laughs> Another example of the, of, the, of the curb and gutters on the opposite side of the street. Your guidelines for doing ADA ramps come in this new set of standards that are 90% approved. In the front, it talks about your design criteria and your inspection criteria, which are different. Design criteria is a little lower 
than the inspection criteria. For example, maximum inspection slope for an ADA ramp is 8.33. Design is 7.5%. Same thing with the wings. There also is also a minimum and a maximum value as shown in, in the table. The other thing you need, what kind of concrete you're going to be using. You, here at Mission Bay, we have a system called EDOX. But outside of that, everything is the same for any project. You need submittals. Our cover sheet for submittal looks like this. And all the submittals that are submitted by the contractor needs to be reviewed and they need to be approved before they can use it. In the case for ADA ramps, one talks about right here, talks about the mix number and talks about the application. In this case, it says sidewalk, curb and gutter, and curb ramps. So those are the things you need prior to going out in the field. Sometimes the city has to replace existing old ADA ramps, which do not conform to the new standard. In that case, surveys requested or performed, breakpoints are located or identified, as well as alignment. The curb and gutter is then excavated and laid out with forms and string line. After the completion of the uh, temporary forms of string line, um, it is time to verify slopes. Before the concrete hardens, now is the time to perform final checks. Slopes at the wings, not to exceed 10%. Slope in front of the ramp, not to exceed 2%. And the best one of all, water test to make sure there's no ponding. From the survey stakes and points, wood forms and string lines are assembled as a model of the entire layout. Wings, ramp, warning band, top and bottom landings. If needed, adjustments can be made at this time to ensure conformity. You should also check the alignment to make sure that the curb ramp is aligned parallel and within the crosswalk lines. After the initial layout, measurements should be taken to the opposite curb to ensure proper spacing. Prior to the concrete pour, a checklist should be followed. First, there should be no loose debris in the bottom of the trench. Form should be sprayed with form oil so that when stripped, they release the concrete. Water can be used as a substitute. Th number three, trench should be moistened with water prior to the placement of concrete. Number four, upon arrival of each truck, verify mixed design and additives with the approved submittal. Number five, verify date, truck number on tag, note the batch time, and monitor lapse time from the batch time for 90 minute window. Concrete should be rejected when time has expired. While concrete is being poured, consideration should be given to the following. Number one, elapsed time since the concrete was batched. Consistency of concrete. Increasing stiffness of concrete is a sign that the concrete is taking off or hardening and would soon be unworkable. Number three, vibrator is properly used. Number four, laborers are con consistently tamping the forms to eliminate air pockets. Fourth item, identifying location of each load by sketch or contract drawing. Fifth item, after the concrete has slightly stiffened, verify grades and finished work. Corrections are still possible before the application of the curing compound. And last but not least, application of the curing compound. Tactile domes are custom fit as needed. While the forms and string lines are in place, tactile domes are laid out to include a 3 by 4 sheet across the ramp. If required, custom formed pieces of tactile domes may be needed to bridge 
between the bottom of the ramp and the back of curb. Ramps less than four feet in width are classified as hardship cases. These require the submittal of documentation to the City and County of San Francisco ADA coordinator for approval. Under no circumstances should a ramp be constructed without prior approval. It is also important that the domes be aligned and parallel with this path of travel. Placement of street names. Street names shall be stamped in bold, four inch high, half inch deep letters on the flared side farthest from the angular corner or adjacent sidewalk flag as directed by the engineer. Names should be facing the ramp. Letters should be straight in a straight line, tangent or parallel to the cur curb face. Warning bands are created behind the ADA curb ramp. Overall width should be one foot. Top of the warning band would be an extension of the sidewalk with the same slope. Color can match either the ADA ramp or the sidewalk. The ribs themselves should be uniform, straight, smooth, and contain no deformities. Since not all ADA ramps are built 90 degrees to the, to the curb, they're sometimes built along the curb. In this case, this has been this happened. There's a catch point. We call it a catch point right here in the corner. The ADA ramp from across the slope along the length should be the same. Slope wise, cross slope down to the brake line. From the brake line, a small section is cut so that it matches the curb and gutter. Seating along to the opposite side, there again, should be measured, checked, to make sure that the slope does not exceed 10%. Name. Street names are placed on the side of the AD, on the side of the wing closest to the street. As you can see, this one says North Bay Boulevard North. On the opposite side, which does not have enough room, should have said or would have had Terry Francois Boulevard. Place, placement is at the discretion of the engineer. Warning band, minimum 12 inches. Warning band should be an extension slope wise of the sidewalk. It can also be poured as part of the sidewalk or part of the ramp. Slope of the ADA ramp, main ramp, 7.2% slope. Cross slope for the wing, 5.7, still below 10%. On the opposite wing, measure of 90 degrees to the travel, path of travel, 0.5. domes that are cut or interfered with along the along the front should be trimmed back to a slope of two to one. It's two horizontal to one vertical angle. This is to prevent tripping hazards and allow the wheelchairs to flow. The score line running down the ramp should be straight, parallel, and if possible a deep score. This is to control cracking that might occur through the ADA ramp.